Howdy, I'm Tractor, and I'm about to cook you up something real nice. There's a recipe I've been cooking for a long time that uh, lots of my friends have always requested to know it and stuff, but uh, it's an easy pasta dish, and I make the sauce myself, and it's a, it's very delicious. So I, it's, it's a four cheese pasta, it's called Quattro Fumaggi. It's my own ripoff of my own style of recipe of it. And what we do is we take four cheeses and just melt them together basically and add a few little things like butter and that's our that's our sauce and uh, it's absolutely delicious and uh, very actually not that hard it's it's very easy you gotta know a little bit you know but because <clears throat> what we're gonna do today is we're gonna grate these four cheeses I have uh, Havarti, Pecorino Romano and Provolone Mascarpone, clearly you don't, uh, don't have to grade the mascarpone. Mascarpone is uh, what they put inside of cannolis. And Havarti, it's a good, uh, this cheese will melt up really good. This is an American cheese. Pecorino Romano is basically uh, the brotherhood of Parmesan. Like uh, Parmesan is cow's milk. This is goat's milk. And then provolone is just another good tasting cheese, you know. Mind you, pizza probably. And we're going to grate these three cheeses and melt them into the sauce, okay? And I also have my favorite pasta. You can use whatever, but you got to use a real artist and, like, actual, like, good pasta. I use Casa Criche here. And then we have whole milk, a little bit of acacentas, put that in everything. Garlic powder and salt. That's it. That's it for your ingredient list, really. And it is super easy to make, and I'm about to show you how. And so you also need a good pot to make your sauce in. I'm going to use this skillet because it's easy to, to look in so I can show you what the sauce looks like. And then uh, we're going to boil our, our pasta in this nice, big, thick pot. And it's, it's really, really easy to do. That's all you need. Oh, yeah. And you need a wooden spoon. And you go with the hole in. Yeah. I like using these, too, for utensils. So we're going to start here. First, I'm going to open the mascarpone, because we're only going to use half of each one of these. So you can actually get two bags of pasta and uh, make make two helpings of it. And uh, this is not a cheap recipe by any means, but it's very delicious. It's kind of a special thing when I make it. So first I'm gonna open mascarpone. Mm, look at that. Aha. And then, take half thing of art, half and, uh, and this is a six ounce pack, half of six ounces of already creamy. That's one of the reasons why I chose this cheese, it's good melting cheese. Probably wouldn't even have to grade this one up, but I still am anyway. And, uh, usually I don't use all these plates, but today, and then we'll use half, the package of provolone, and this is an eight ounce pack, provolone, provolone, say it like a real Italian. So I'm just a hillbilly that likes good food. <laughs> That's it. And then uh, we're gonna use half of the seven ounce pecorino mono. See, they're all almost the same size, but I right, cut this one down the middle. I don't know where the sound went at the end of that, uh, a little bit there, but how we're going to grate it is we're going to use the finest, the, the, the fi basically finest setting on this for the pecorino, 
and then uh, we use the smaller one for the provolone and, and uh, the Havarti. And actually, this is a pretty cool, uh, <laughs> pretty cool uh, uh, cheese grater. I'm buying your one. So let's get grating this cheese. Yes, usually what happens. <laughs> okay, so little bucket's useless. But that's why we got our nice cutting board. Look at that. So now we're gonna go ahead and uh, grate up our uh, our other cheeses, because look how good the pecorino came out. It's all nice and basically fluffy. That's what you're looking for. Let's grate our, our provolone. We're using uh, one size bigger of a hole on the uh, cheese grater for this. Look at that. How it's coming out. As you can see now, I've got all the cheeses grated up. All nice and uh, actually very well. I went ahead and cut up the butter so it'll be easier to melt. And now is when we start on our, uh, our pasta sauce. And uh, how we start the sauce, we'll do it right here in this vessel. Yep. Right here in this pot. And I'm choosing the cast iron skillet for the, for the whole reason of the shape of this pot. It's so I can show it easier on video, really. So before we make the sauce, let's go ahead and start our pot of uh, pasta water. Now we're gonna take this, fill it up a good amount with water. All right, we got our nice pot of water. That's a good considerable amount, not all the way. I'm gonna use a big pot. So now I'll start boiling this up right now. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a little bit of salt to the water. And that's about good to the water. And then I'm gonna add some echocentis. Good stuff. Right here, this water. Now let's get that started. We're gonna start boiling that right here. And so lit it up and you don't add your pasta, your nice casa criche, until the pot starts boiling hot. I, I've seen people on TV and stuff start it when the Pot's still cold. No, 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 no. You need the pot. You need the water to be boiled. Now let's go ahead and start our sauce. Okay. For one, we're gonna we'll turn the heat on pretty low. You don't wanna you don't wanna burn any of the cheeses. Okay. I've got it. Yeah, it's at about three right here for heat. And uh. This because I already seasoned this beautiful skillet, man. This is a beautiful, ah, I use it all the time. It's seasoned, it's basically non-stick, but you don't have to have a non-stick or anything. And so I never measure, just put in eh, eh, about that much milk would be good because we need to be able to melt all of our cheeses into it. So that is basically a vessel. So, yeah. Got any, probably, Mm. Three quarters, maybe an inch of milk on the bottom of this. So, yeah. Now, we're going to go ahead and add our butter. All our butter. 
So hopefully, and it'll be the first thing we melt in there. Let's blast the little. We'll go ahead and melt our butter in there. And we'll heat it up. Because you don't want to add those cheeses until it's warm. And we'll melt our butter into this. Let that gain a little heat for a minute because it's very low. I started it off very low, so there's not a lot of heat in there right now. So let's give that about. Eh. That's not warm. I'm gonna turn that up a little bit, but uh, let that heat up some. Sorry about that last one. The auto rotate got to me, but you know, butter starting to melt. Starting to heat up a little bit. But as you can see, our pot is boiling. Our pot is boiling. So let's go ahead and add our pot to that. Come on, get the last piece out of there. There we go. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. We'll add our pasta water. Keep the heat up for a minute. Because you want a nice roomy pot so the pasta bounces around. You know. That's starting to get warm. So that no longer will need a lid. Look at that butter starting to melt in there. Let's us know our, our mixture is getting warm. This I'm going to turn it down just a tiny bit. Just for control because it's still... It's going to get real hot. It's going to get very, very hot. Yeah. Let's keep stirring that. You never want to stop stirring it. Okay. Melt that butter in. Because if you let it sit for too long, it has the uh, ability to, to burn itself up. You know, when it starts getting real hot. But all we're trying to do is melt everything together. That's all we're trying to do. Okay. Now that our butter's nice and melted up, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add us some, some garlic powder. Keep stirring it. And maybe a tablespoon, maybe a tablespoon and a half, about somewhere in there, garlic powder. Really until it looks good. And uh, it takes some minced garlic, and, and uh, I'm not going to put it in there, because the mixed garlic is in water. You pour some of the water in there. Flavor. Look at that. That's flavor right there. Stir that in. Stir that up for a little bit. Try to get the milk acclimated. Every once in a while, make sure your pasta is not sticking to the bottom. It shouldn't be. If you're uh, got it got it hot enough, boil rolling good, it should not be sticking. Um, that's cooking nice. And don't. And I'm gonna add a little bit of our accent. Our accent. I actually love this stuff. Yeah, it's good now. Now I'm gonna turn that down some. So it's not as hot. And just add all the cheese. Stir. You gotta keep stirring. That's our mascarpone right there. Put that in there. Along with cheese. Ooh, yeah. Okay, I'll keep stirring. You don't want it to, to sit. 
Remember putting our provolone in last? Yeah, look at that. Keep stirring it. Not stop stirring it. We need to melt in all that cheese. So it's nice and basically thin. Okay. And I still have the uh, burner on a three. Yeah. Okay, it's all nice. Getting rid of all the chunks. Getting rid of the, uh, the chunks of mascarpone because that's melting in there. That'll make it nice and creamy. So we gotta keep stirring. Now, I've stirred pretty good and gotten all the chunks out. And now that it's all melted together, let's put it down all the way low. The burner's lowest setting. You basically gotta sit here, watch this, and just stir it up until the uh, pasta's done. This is it, you just sit here, keep it stirred up, and you can, you can see it, how they're all melted together. Let me get that film. Mm. That's delicious. Actually, I'll do it the right way. What you want to do is taste your sauce. Because if it don't taste good here, it ain't going to taste good on the pasta. Oh, that's delicious. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's fantastic. You can add more garlic if you want. But I like it just this way. Nice and creamy. Now, you don't stop stirring at all. You cannot stop stirring until the uh, until that pasta is done cooking. Okay, in about ten minutes, it's about average for for uh, to cook some pasta. But you stop stirring for just a brief moment here to taste a piece of your casa creche to make sure your casa creche is done. And it looks done. If I catch someone. Throwing pasta at the ceiling, I'm going to be mad because you're supposed to taste it to see how done it is. That needs about another minute, minute or two. But keep stirring. Now because our uh, pasta has about a minute left. I'm gonna turn the heat off on the sauce and stir it till a little bit of that heat dissipates. Till some of that heat dissipates. You gotta keep stirring it or else it'll uh, basically burn to the bottom of the pot. Wait for that steam to go down a little bit. Actually, what I'm gonna do to help myself out is take it off of the heat, so I just turn it off. But let's taste our pot. Come on, we need one piece. Just one. Just one. Hmm. <coughs> Here we go. That is done. It is done. Let's go ahead and drain our water. Now, we go ahead and drain our pasta. And I got the sink over here, and it, I gotta show you how to drain pasta water. Something wrong. You shouldn't be cooking. Here we go. Now I got the water drain. You're going to do this immediately. Immediately add the pasta to the sauce right away. You do not want to wait, okay? 
Waiting is bad, okay? Because if you wait, then your pasta will get sticky and it'll adhere to the sauce as well. You know, when, when you put sauce on a pasta, you want it to be right away. No, no wait, okay? Right away. Okay, and you just stir it up. Stir that up for a little bit. Now that you got it all nice and stirred up, you can serve it up the way it sits, but I like to wait about five, 10 minutes, one for it to cool down so you don't burn yourself. Two, it'll give the pasta sauce, the cheese, a little bit of time to adhere to the pasta itself. It'll, it'll give it a little time to combine. Get that all nice and stirred. Just keep stirring it for a little bit. I basically like to wait for the steam to come down some. But yeah, look at that. Mmm. Nice and cheesy and white. Mmm. It's gonna be good. be honest, I, I use too much milk, but that will not affect the flavor. It just means we got a lot of sauce. See how, uh, as it cools down a little bit, that cheese strings up. So I got to keep stirring, basically. And I got the heat off. The pan's still warm. But this is where the cheese really it starts to adhere to the pasta. Okay, I did use a little bit too much milk. But that's all I get for not having a measurement. <laughs> now, about maybe two minutes, maybe three, have gone by. And see how that cheese is getting stringier? That's what you want. You want that stirred up. That is four different types of cheese together. Yeah, that, that stringiness of that cheese is what you're looking for. That will be taste absolutely delicious and be all over your pasta. Be honest, it looks yellower on camera than it is in person because this phone's pretty cheap. And we'll go ahead and stir that for about, eh, sit here on this for about another four or five minutes. Let that cool down. It, it really depends on, because there's still steam coming out of it, I don't want really a lot of steam because that still means it's hot. So I need need that water to cool down. But I did use too much milk, I have to admit. So it'll take a little longer than normal. That's what I get for not having a measurement. <laughs> but yeah, look how good that looks. Look at that cheese coming off it. Mm. Yeah. Because when you do this, you want to scrape the bottom while you're stirring, okay? So you get all that cheese up. And coat it on all the pasta. Look at that. Mmm, look at that. Mmm, nice and cheesy. Well, <clears throat> got a plate here. Let's eat. Let's get some of that off of there. Without spilling some. Mmm, look at that. Mm. Some cheesy. Mmm. Mm. Mm. Oh man, look at that. Look how white that is, man. How everything's perfectly coated and stuff. Mm. That's something good right there. Here we are on the... At the table, clearly. Look at that. Yeah, sauce is a little runny. Add a little too much milk. But whatever. Still gonna taste good. Well, well let's eat.
Wow. That's, ah, that's good. That's very good. Very, very good. Mmm. Oh. You'd think because of all that garlic powder and garlic water I put in it, it would taste a bunch like garlic, but it does not. Mmm. It's very good. Oh. Mmm. That is wonderful. Oh. It's just a complex amount of flavors because every cheese has its own flavor. And butter is another dairy product, so lactose intolerant, you can't have this, sorry. Sorry. But, uh, ah. Mm. This is so good. Ah. Basically that film of cheese covering everything. I did use too much milk, but uh, I need to come up with an actual measurement of milk instead of just pouring it in there. That's my fault. I use a little less than I did, because then it wouldn't be as the sauce wouldn't be as thin. But uh, it's still good. No, I should have made some garlic bread to go with this. Mm. It is absolutely fantastic. Ah. Because every cheese tastes different. Basically. Damn it. Basically. Every cheese tastes different. So, you get all these mixed of flavors. Add a little bit of garlic. And it's just uh, good. Because cheese. Especially real cheese like we used in this. Has so many complex flavors in it already. Just one piece of cheese. When you combine, you know four of them together you can do it out of five this is just an idea man but you use real cheese though real from the deli counter bella grisia is one of my favorite companies ah, i love it straight real italian cheeses but oh you already ate the whole plate worth that's that's pretty funny but yeah cheers Big old Dutch oven. You don't have to use this. Use a pot. If I had two pots that were the size of that, it would have been perfect. Because then I wouldn't have used as much milk. But uh, all my other pots are locked away in the basement until I buy a house. Because I've just got the apartment for now. And I'm saving a lot of the really good uh, Pioneer Woman stuff. Because I got a whole set of Pioneer Woman dishes. It's just that uh, they're in the basement. Probably should have gotten them out for this, but... That's so good. Look at that cheese sauce. Look at that cheese. Because that's the consistency you're looking for. How it's uh, on the uh, fork like that. Ah. Yeah, it's so good. Mm. 10 out of 10, I highly recommend this. But, uh, oh yeah, if anyone's wondering, accent. <laughs> accent. It's just MSG on sodium glutamate. Yeah, on sodium glutamate, it uh, it uh, it's actually naturally occurring in foods and nature and stuff. It uh, it uh, basically just enhances the flavor of food. It unlocks a flavor profile from the food and, and it's basically a strengthener and it plays with the taste buds on your tongue, basically. And uh, makes it better that way. And uh, it's naturally occurring in nature. They actually extract that from certain, certain uh, foods that uh, seaweed uh, has uh, monsoonium glutamate in it. But don't be afraid of it, add that to everything. But uh, yeah. You guys see the pecorino, delicious. You can taste the tanginess. The pecorino is a very strong flavor in there, which I absolutely love. Uh, a little bit of garlic, and then uh, all cheeses just taste good. <laughs> you use the real cheese, though. But uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Cheers. I, I thank you for watching and like and subscribe for more. Remember, you can make every recipe your own. Just use mine as an idea. Thank you.